Patreon.com slash the walkoff podcast. Uh, $4 a month gets you in there. It is a Monday morning mailbag on a Tuesday afternoon kind of day. My favorite show. Espinal trade. So this came up uh, when talking with Jeff Blair last week. He does anticipate uh, another move coming before uh, opening day. And he threw out Espinal's name as what he considers a likely trade candidate. Uh, we got a question here on that video from Twitch Ezio Han Solo. Are you a Han or a Han guy? I'm a Han. Han, okay. I'm a Han. Anyways, okay. Han or Han Solo uh, wants to know, why Santiago? Why not send Biggio? <laughs> I mean, great question. Uh, and- a lot of a lot of Blue Jays fans prefer Santiago Espinal over Kevin Biggio, and I can see why. why. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, Funny thing is, many organizations prefer Santiago Espinal <laughs> to Kevin Biggio, so that would be the answer to that question. And listen, th- this is all s- speculation. Jeff Blair was just kind of looking at this roster, seeing areas of need, seeing how many second basemen, capable second basemen are well, on this lineup. In he this did lineup. pull out a little glint of educated hypothesis here from mm-hmm. his talk. I mean, he had him and Blair, sorry, Blair and Barker yeah. had uh, Dalton Varsho on their show last week or the week before. And, you know, reading the tea leaves, Jeff Blair glim- glimmered a little detail. Maybe he's reading too much into it. Maybe not. But Dalton Varsho, when referring to his teammates and how excited he was to join this this team, referred to the second baseman as being Whit Merrifield. Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe that's a little slip of the tongue where we're getting some insight where... That is the Blue Jays' plan is for Whit Merrifield to be more or less the everyday second baseman. I mean, we talked the crowded catcher position for a year before we actually saw a trade made, but second base is a crowded position right now. You've got Kevin Biggio, you've got Santiago Espinal, you have Whit Merrifield, you've got Otto Lopez, you've got Addison Barger. All, according to some, according to all some of fans. them are on the 40-man roster. According to some fans, you've got Boba Shett, who's a second baseman as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, possibly. <laughs> All right. So why Espinal? Why not Biggio? It's just that simple, right? We're just talking about return on investment. This is the haul you would get back, right? Plus, I think Espinal, Espinal was and, a all-star and, last year, right? Espinal and Merrifield are also a little bit of a redundancy in terms of what each of them brings to the Blue Jays. Whereas at least with Cavan, there is a uh, left-handed bat. Left-handed bat. Well, I mean, if that's what you're going to look at, if you're going to say, look, we're going to take two MLB second basemen into the season, they're either both righties or a righty and a lefty. Mm Mm-hmm. That just makes more sense. Is like, why not have the option of a left-handed bat? So I think now that's a factor. the one caveat here, the one thing that I think would deter this organization from moving off of Santiago Espinal is how good of a defender he is when it comes to being able to play third base and shortstop. Listen, there isn't really a backup shortstop on this team. And yes, one of Boba Shett's strongest suits is that the guy goes out and plays every day, right? I think he played 159 games in uh, 2021. I think it was like 157 last year. Like the guy is on the field every single day, but to not have an insurance, uh, you know, a, a plan B, if you will, an, an insurance plan, it's risky. So I don't know if, I guess what I'm saying is that I would rather Espinal be the backup than Otto Lopez. Nothing against Otto Lopez, young kid coming up the ranks, but maybe Otto Lopez is ready. And maybe this organization, obviously the scouting department and the player development department knows more than anything Adam and I could freaking say. So if they think Otto's ready, then maybe they are ready to move off of Espinal. Espinal, without a doubt, though, has the biggest value of anyone on that second base roster that they could move outside of maybe Whit Merrifield. And I think, the Jays have decided he's the guy, right? 
He's the guy. I don't think he'll get renewed, but he's the guy till the end of his contract. I think this year and next year. He is, is, he's got a, he's got a pending, he's got, he's got uh, an $18 million mutual option for next year. There's no way the Blue Jays agree to that. They're going to decline that option and pay the $500,000 to get out of it. Right. That's the buyout is, is half a mil. So I think that uh, if Merrifield were to return, it would be on another deal that would be signed afterwards. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, it is always just I don't know funny to me when you know with every trade. I mean, it makes me think back to the Dalton Varsho Moreno Guriel trade, and it's like, why did we have to include Guriel? Why couldn't it have just been Moreno? And it's like well, that was the price, man. Like that was that was the. Can you can you imagine the Diamondbacks organization goes to Ross Atkins and Mark Shapiro and is like, listen, we want Alejandro Kirk. We'll give you Dalton Var show. And then the front office goes, you know what? Moreno. Let's throw in Lourdes too. <laughs> yeah, that's like I guarantee it's you know, like you could your teams are only going to move players for players that they find value in and want on back in yeah. trade in their organization. There's not a lot you can do about it. Not a lot you can do about it. Yeah, you or gotta give something to get something. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Uh, well, I mean, that, and that's why we figured Danny Jansen was going to stay all off season. Mm-hmm. Of the three catchers, we just thought, of the teams who are in need of a young catcher, a uh, guy with more control, probably more appealing than a mm-hmm. guy who's working through his RBs already. 